So you guys are gonna have to help me out. Isn't this the guy from Super Smash Brothers? Hey everybody, Max here. First off, apologies for this footage that I clearly did not film on the day I originally made this video. Uh, see, what happened was, um, kind of a funny story. Uh, I was an idiot and I didn't think to shoot any B-roll footage for this, so there you go. Word of advice to any would-be content creators out there, you can never have enough B-roll. Anyways, a while back I happened to discover that Toei Animation, creators of some of the world's most famous and popular anime, has a museum not far from me over in Nerima, Tokyo. While it might surprise you to learn I'm not the world's biggest anime fan, I still enjoy it, and like many of you watching this, I actually have a lot of fond memories watching English dubs on Toonami back in the day. Getting to visit Toei's museum was certainly an adventure for me, full of interesting exhibits, most of which I can't actually show you. But we'll get to that. Guys, like always, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with your friends. Oh, and for the love of Goku, hit the bell in the corner so you're notified when we upload a new video. Yeah, so have I gotten an anime waifu? Absolutely not. Alright, so we are walking to the museum from Oizumi Gakuen Station. It's hot, 30-something degree weather. And I'm, I'm pretty happy that I brought some spare batteries for the GoPro because based on how hot it is, I get the feeling that batteries are gonna drain pretty quick. I'm barely using my phone and it's running hot. Batteries fall into below 70% mild use. Yeah. Now you might be asking, why don't you just take the bus over there, you know, like a normal person. And I realized bus is gonna take so long just to arrive to the station that it would actually be faster for me to walk there yes even in this heat every day sometimes you just gotta do something that you know is gonna suck all right so i uh went the wrong way took the wrong turn partly because i'm trying not to look at my phone too much because in this weather it caused my phone to run hot and the battery starts to die well a lot quicker than kenny from south park hanging out in an episode of walking dead I kind of want to see that now. I bet it would actually be way better and more interesting than pretty much all of Walking Dead postseason. God, whatever season where you knew that uh, one chick was going to be dying soon because she just accepted the lead role on the new Star Trek, whichever season that was, one of the boring ones, that's helpful. Are we there yet? No. 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 Hey Vegeta. What? Are we there yet? Yes. Yay! So here we are, right in front of the museum. And one reason why I wanted to come out here, well, another one anyways, is mission is free and after all I'm very big on trying to find stuff that you can do out here that costs a grand total of nothing. The day I arrived the museum was celebrating the 20th anniversary of Pretty Cure, a cartoon that's popular with little girls and pretty much nobody else. Like seriously if you ever want to annoy a group of Japanese kids just ask them how much they like Pretty Cure. Getting inside the museum was pretty easy I just gave them a few bits of information about myself and that's it free admission. First, I had to check out the gift shop. While I wasn't shocked to see Pretty Cure and One Piece memorabilia on display, I was happy to see my old favorite Digimon well represented. That is, until I happened to run into a... Neg. Yes, your eyes aren't deceiving you. That's Davis and Vimon from Season 2 of Digimon. Well, I guess after the original show got a sequel and a reboot that I honestly didn't really care for and was actually kind of bored by, Season 2 gets a revival as well? Well, look, so long as they finally tell us what the heck was up with that Cthulhu-inspired Digimon that showed up once and never again, I'll be happy. I mean, come on, Digimon. You give us, like, this whole Cthulhu-inspired Digimon and then you don't even do anything with it? Who do you think you are, J.J. Abrams? Hey, Davis, listen to me, dude. Kari, 
She ain't in here. The shippers hate you. Registration was free. You just gotta give them a little bit of information about uh, how many people are coming. Do you have any kids? Where is it you live? Of course, I am from Tokyo, so you know that's what I told them. Give you a little bit of a little seal here, and we're in the front courtyard with a little mouse mascot. I gotta say, I like that this one is not as evil as that other one. Turns out this little guy's named Pero, and he was the main character in Toei's 1969 animated adaptation of Puss in Boots, one of Toei's earliest cinematic successes. The movie's also notable for the sheer number of major names in anime who worked on it, including future Pokemon animator Kotabe Yoichi and, in an uncredited role, some guy named Miyazaki Hayao. I tried looking up if he did anything big, but my Google Foo came up short. And of course we got here uh, Goku's pod or Vegeta's, I don't know, I don't care. You know, I gotta say, I'm really fairly neutral on the whole Superman versus Goku thing, but I gotta say, you come out here, you can actually see the pod that Goku came to Earth in. Step your game up, Superman. Outside, there are also a lot of posters for popular anime Slam Dunk, which is also one of my favorites. Now I gotta tell you, this one anime, along with that one guy who was in a movie with Bugs Bunny one time, I think his name was Wayne Knight, well this is probably the reason why basketball got so big in Japan. It's also just a pretty good show in general, and if you've never seen it, go watch it, even if you're not really into basketball. A little something here for all you Dragon Quest fans, you people like your RPGs, your video games. I admit I'm not really a massive fan of Dragon Quest. Part of that is just because um, that franchise is never really that big in the United States. You think of big JRPGs, the one that comes to mind is always gonna be Final Fantasy. But I know it's got its fans, and also, Toriyama is a pretty good mangaka. <laughs> got the dance corner right over here, where you can dance with all these anime characters. I gotta say, so far, none of them got anything on Star-Lord. Hey Max, how come you're not dancing with the Precure characters? Honey, there's only so much I'm willing to do to embarrass myself on camera, okay? This right here is a little number called Oshiri Tante. Uh, he's a detective. And if you can't figure out what he's supposed to be, just judging from this image, Oh god, I just realized, is this video gonna get banned now? <sighs> okay, so I guess now we have to get to the part where I was slightly annoyed. Toei Animation doesn't actually allow you to film or take photos of yeah, about half the museum. Unfortunately, that half you're not allowed to shoot in, that's entirely the half of the museum that has all the interesting exhibits. They have production notes, timelines of some of their most popular shows, a model of their animation offices, a mock-up of what an animator's desk would have looked like back in the day, and even some cool vintage merchandise from Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, and Digimon. The Digimon bit rankled me in particular since among the merchandise on display were the audio drama CDs. If you've never heard of them, they were little CDs that told additional stories featuring our lovable cast of characters and Davis. And of course they had the entire voice cast reprising their roles. And Davis. And like a lot of the really cool stuff from back in the day, these CDs were never released outside of their native territory. Or as Bridge Joey would put it, Man, the Japanese get all the cool stuff. So yeah, it really sucks I can't show you a good chunk of the museum. This was a lot of things that I was really interested and excited to show all of you and I just can't do it, and I'm really sorry about that. Originally, when I was planning out this video, I had this whole bit written up where I was going to complain and give some mock outrage about it, like, blah, why are you no cool, blah. You know, on reflection, no, look, it's their museum, it's a private company, they set the policies. I'm really happy I got to see it for myself, and 
all these photos I show you. I hope that that's good enough for you. And if not, I will leave the address for the museum in the description. So hopefully you can come to Tokyo and check it out yourself because it's a pretty cool museum. I really had a great time visiting there. And I think if you can come too, you'll like it a lot. So you know what? Toei Animation, thanks for setting up a cool museum. Please be nicer to Team Four Star. So earlier in this video, we discussed how I'm not really the biggest anime fan in the world. And well, see, that's because when I started to learn Japanese, I found out that there was a certain stereotype that the people who want to learn Japanese are just way too much in anime and are going to very quickly drop out of the class when they find out that it's, you know, not just going to be the anime fun time hour. When I started to learn Japanese back in the day at San Diego Mesa College, anybody carrying an anime bag they got at San Diego Comic Con during the summer, they're gonna flunk out before their first semester. So I purposely avoided anime and manga for a good long while, because I wanted to show my teachers that this is something I was gonna take seriously. Well, plus also, I figured that even though anime offers a lot of insane worlds that are fun and interesting, I always felt that the real Japan out there, that's probably one that I'm going to be more interested in. While doing some research on this museum, I came across a cool little website called Anime Tourism. See, for all the insane locations that we see in some anime, in fact a lot of it is actually based on real locations that exist in Japan. I always thought that sounded pretty cool. I was thinking that perhaps I should go out sometime and film some of these places. See if any of them are pretty cool to visit in real life. Maybe there might even be an anime or two that I enjoyed back in the day. Maybe took place in Tokyo. Man, that'd be an adventure. Take it away, live action, Max. I wonder... Is there one? Okay, Goku, seriously, this is why you guys really need to stop being such dicks to Team Four Star. <laughs> <laughs>